This week's show, we're going to talk about riding the canter. You know, a lot of people have a lot of trouble with that and actually a little bit nervous about it. I'm going to give you some tips that will help anybody at any level of horsemanship to be a better rider of the low. Hey, this is a good segment. You're not going to want to miss it. That's coming up right now on Ride Smart. You know, the canter, boy, we can get some ground covered and we want these horses to be really handy and relaxed in the canter and not running away. You know, one of the reasons a lot of horses, people, I said, and this is probably the most common thing I hear all the time, and I tell them, turn loose your horse. And people always say, well, if I turn loose, he's gonna run off. Guys, it's because you won't turn loose that he's probably charging or running off. They're run, trying to run away from that pressure. You know, drop that hand down, sit back, slow your rhythm. You know, we all know that the canter is a three beat gait. So it's one, two, three, airborne. And if he's in the left lead, the sequence of footfall, three beats, he pushes off with the right hind, that's beat one. Beat two, there is a diagonal, left hind, right front. And then the uh, last beat, the left foot or leading foot strikes the ground. And of course, when he changes leads, when does he do that? When he's in the air. And again, that's why it's called a flying lead change. So again, timing would be important when you finally got to that. But today, let's just talk about riding or sitting that canter really nice. You know, a lot of people get into trouble because they get off balance. You know, they get nervous when that horse speeds up. And when they get nervous, Greg, they start standing in those stirrups and kind of hunkering over. You know, you heard me say that monkey on a sheepdog look. So, and another thing I think that causes a problem is people, they drop their head down. And when you put your chin or your head down, look where my shoulders go, they go forward. And as you lean forward, pretty soon now you're getting daylight under your seat and that becomes a big old problem. So if you'll sit back on your pockets right here, sit on your pockets, and the rhythm that you gotta have is what? In your spine, the last six inches of your spine, your hips are moving in rhythm or sync with that horse. So I got Greg Gansko here, one of my good buddies that I've done a lot of riding with. We've gone a lot of miles. He was in my program, gosh, years ago, Greg. So I'm gonna have to have you ride bad for me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good. All right. So uh, again, and then we'll watch him, try to watch him ride good. So I want you to start out to the left, and I'm going to ask him to do a few things that I see common mistakes of. So as he pushes the canter, let's just have him do one of the most common and lean forward. See how he gets daylight under his seat? Soon as he leans forward, he gets that daylight. Lean forward and give me that daylight. Lean a little more there. Lean forward. You know, again, every time you get forward, you get that separation. And that's what we don't need. Now, now, why don't you uh, give me a little chicken winging? Boy, there's, there's the other one I see in the canter. Boy, when, and when you start chicken winging, guys, like you're trying to fly away, he's sending a signal every time with those reins. So that might look good to some people, but it sure don't look good to me. And I don't think the horse likes it at all. All right, now. Now, I want you to lean to the left. You watch most people, they drop their shoulders. There's the look that I get. That's so common. Now, his left shoulder's lower than his right, so he makes his horse feel unbalanced. All right, and whoa. Okay. Man, that was... <laughs> That's hard to ride like that, isn't it? It is. <laughs> it takes a little more work. I'm going to let Greg take a little break here for a minute. Now, uh... Another one that I see, I have to ask you to do, and that's people. What they 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 get the, the again they get to the, they get their feet out in front of them, way out in front of them. And you know what? I think that can trouble your horse. And that's a brace, and it, it makes you real stiff in the saddle. 
So again, now put your feet under you correctly. You gotta have a bend in your knees. I like that straight line from heel, hip, shoulder to ear. All right, now let's see right Greg ride correctly. Now again, I want him to just sit with a lot of rhythm. You see he's got a lot of rhythm in his free arm as well. You watch that free arm going forward and backwards, not up and down, just in rhythm with the horse's feet. He's actually in rhythm with the leading foot, the right front right there. His eyes are up. He's got rhythm in his back right there. He's staying in the saddle. His chin is up. His hands are forward. And again, you got to think. You know, a lot of times in dressage, we say, ride the outside of your horse. So if he put a little bit of weight on the left seat bone there, that really straighten your shoulders up. I'm going to ask Greg now to just look to the left. Look, look, turn your head to the left. And that'll really square you up sometimes if you feel like you're leaning. So as you're traveling right, look to the left sometimes and it'll make you not drop your shoulders. Real pretty. All right, you can look forward now. I want him to start preparing for stop. And I like to count three. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, whoa. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, and he was just a little bit ahead of me. He saw that horse kind of stop on his front feet. So again, timing is everything. In his body during the canter, man, that, that, that's where it's all at. So, all right, as you come in here, I'm gonna kind of go out there and, and think about doing just a little dab of riding right there. Okay, so as I move in here, again, I'm, I, you know, especially when I'm training, you know, I don't have, uh, you know, like the earth's not cracking in front of me. I don't have a grizzly bear chasing me. So I have time to kind of get things right as I train my horse. You know, my definition of training is development through gradually increasing demands. So I'm riding a young horse here, and you can see this horse looking around at a lot of things in this arena. So the more that I just walk here, I'm thinking about what I'm fixing to do before I do it. And that's a big part of the preparation. You know, great horseman thinks ahead. It's pre-pair, not post-pair, that we need to work on. So as I just, on this young horse, again, you can see my, get my body moving. I go into that trot right here. Now I'm watching, I'm gonna slowly just reach my right leg back, let that horse feel it, and, and go push the canter here. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be talking to myself. This is what I do when I ride. I talk to myself. And I don't have to say it out loud, but I'm saying, Craig, sit in the middle. Craig, pick your eyes up. Craig, sit back. Craig, keep your hips moving. You know, I just kind of get my weight maybe a little bit to the outside. Now you see my horse, he's tipping or canning his head to the right. I can do all this work and now work on my horse a little. I'm just gonna pick that inside rein up, keep my hips moving here. Keep my hips moving. Just make some soft touches here to get this horse to correct, correct. On a lazy horse, watch my legs. I got rhythm in my feet, keeping this horse moving all the time. Just keeping this horse going. Here, there. I'm gonna bring that nose to the inside just a little bit. There we go, there we go. And as I go to stop, I'm gonna prepare. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, whoa, right there. And just find that stop. Allow that horse to get his feet correct. So again, we're thinking all the time as we're working with these horses. You know, uh, again, the canter can be so pleasant. A lot of people are a lot real nervous about speeding that horse up. And, and uh, I, I can certainly understand that. But once you get into the canter, you're gonna find it's actually the smoothest gait of all. Now, when we come back, I'm gonna talk about a horse charging, how I might correct that a little bit, and, and, and just continue on thinking while we're riding in the canter. Welcome to the Double Horn Store.
As a colt starting world champion and a horseman that works a lot of different horses, different ages, with a lot of different problems, one of the, my most important tools is my Craig Cameron flag. You know, this is the one I get a horse brave with. I get him desensitized. Take that fear away from that horse and also create that all important forward movement in the round pen and for different tasks like trailer loading. You know, I like to work uh, uh, horses from another horse using the flag and this is a very light, very effective flag that I use almost on an everyday basis. I got different styles for different folks and this flag here is my brand new flag that I call my finish flag. What a great flag this is as you're just taking that horse another step further to get him better and better, braver and braver. For all the great equipment, go to CraigCameron.com and order from the Double Horn Store. You know, Greg, one of the things I see the most is that a lot of people will ride with their stirrups too long. Yeah. And you know, that's one of the most common things that I see. You know, and if you don't have that little bit of bend in your leg right here, when you start going fast, then you start reaching for your stirrups and then your knees go straight. And you know, that's when you're gonna start bouncing, kind of be all over the place. Yes, sir. And so, so again, make sure, you know, just experiment with your stirrups from time to time. And the more performance type work you do, sometimes the more you're gonna to wanna to shorten those stirrups. Like if you're gonna really get into a race or cutting or something like that, you better shorten those stirrups because the first time that horse makes a big move, you're gonna lose that pedal. So just experiment from time to time. Check it out. Don't just say, oh, I like the way my stirrups, you know, make sure you got that bend. I, I'm, I guarantee you, I can actually shorten this stirrup just a little bit. And the weather will affect the leather on these saddles. So one day I'll think, man, did somebody ride my saddle? Shoot, the weather got hot, it got cold, and sometimes I have to make some adjustments. Or I just oil my saddle saddle sometimes they'll kind of stretch a little bit so I'm always adjusting and I don't get stuck just doing the same thing I'm checking things out so I can always better my horsemanship all the time all right now you know a lot of people one thing that I think is just uh, uh, you know not a good thing to tell somebody and that's never ever grab the saddle horn a lot of riders when they're learning to especially in the canter. I tell them, get a hold of that horn a little bit. So I'll have them shorten up, go to one hand, grab that horn. Or I might have Greg go to what I call seat correction, where you put a hand behind you, one hand on the horn, and you pull yourself down in the saddle. Now, when you pull yourself down, say, again, sit, you know, get that straight line from heel, hip, shoulder, ear, and now move those hips. Move those hips in rhythm with that horse right there. So, I, you know, a lot of times I'll take hold of that horn or I got my night latch on the saddle. I'll get a hold of it so I can get that good seat. I'm on a green horse and I'm loping it for some of the first few times. Absolutely, without a doubt, I'm gonna get a hold of something. My philosophy is always live to ride another day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so do what you gotta do. So all right, I'm gonna have Greg go around here and do a little bit of seat correction for me. So all right, he can just ride left, pick up a little canter, and just get that flowing movement with those hips. People, you don't get to sit. Quit being a horse potato and just sitting on the horse. Now, you see how he's gotta hold that cantle? Some of you guys that are a little unsure and a little bouncy, grab that cantle like that and pull yourself down in the saddle, just like so. And you know, that really will give you a nice, secure seat. And if you can, Greg, now put one hand on the saddle horn while you're doing that. Now he's pulling with both hands. And that would just give you, you will learn that feel, that feel that you want when you're actually cantering. So a lot of times I'll have a lot of people ride just like that and it'll really help them. And then I'll say, now just give me a stride or two without it. Now go back to it, just like that. Now, now go without it. Now go back to it. Beautiful, good. Now see if you can just drop the reins behind the saddle horn and cross your hands just for a moment, just like that. Beautiful, now he's truly riding with a feel, hands apart guiding right there and these are what i call my seat correction exercises put your hands straight out the side just for a moment right there straight out now get guide your horse a little bit 
Oh yeah, that's good work. Good. Now go back to the, taking the horn and the cannel. Now get the horn and the cannel again and pull yourself down deep. See how square he gets there? Now I'd like to see him uh, hold on the cannel and find the stop. All right, and whoa. Boy, and that really, again, you're not flopping and popping. You're helping yourself. You're helping the horse. And you know what you're learning? You're learning to feel the feel. You know, sometimes I say you got to ride and get the look. You know, the look is, is when you watch somebody ride and you go, man, that guy, he just sits a horse nice. You know, that's the look right there. And these exercises here can really help you to get that. Just go to that seat correction, absolutely. How'd that feel, Greg? Felt good, felt good. It's good, it, it really gives you that secure feeling. Yeah, it helped me. I, I was happy to, 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 when I moved out like this, it really drawed me down in there. You know, again, it my balance. It, 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 when you get like in a round pin, some of my other seat creatures just straight out, twist in the saddle, twist the other way right there, pull yourself down, hands across your chest, and then sometimes like in the round pin, I'll tell them to actually close their eyes because now they're, they're all they got is a feel when you do that. Yeah. And you gotta kinda trust your horse and go. Well, she kinda young and I was, I was wondering what she's gonna do when I dropped the reins and she held the circle pretty decent. A Couple times I had to pick it up, but uh, that, that's she right. needs that. Well, they do need that. She needs need me that. to turn loose a little bit. You do need to turn loose. And when you turn loose, now you literally have to ride with your legs, with your seat, with your feel. Traditionally, your aids are what? Hand, seat, and legs. You know, and again, the opposite word of aids would be hindering your horse. <laughs> We'd rather be aiding our horses. Yeah, but helping them. When you ride and you got that continuous contact in their face right there, well then, then you get into trouble right there. So again, we don't want to ride with that continual contact. I you agree, know, Craig. I don't think people ride near enough with their legs. And, and that's right. I, I, that's probably one of the things I say the most. People don't use their legs uh, enough. So sometimes when I'm riding left, you'll hear me say, if you're riding two hands, put your left hand in front of your right, slightly. Left hand above the right, slightly. Left shoulder in front of the right, slightly. Just slightly. Left foot in front of the right, slightly. Not, not exaggerated, just slightly. It's a position where the, the cowboy uh, or, the, or the horseman is in the same lead as the horse. Yes, sir. And that comes down to what? Position position, position. All right, I'm going to lope it a little bit. I'm going to get you to kind of stand right about here, right there, so I can maybe stay out in the light where we can see me right here. And again, my horse needs to lope a little bit. This little old young horse right here just needs to lope along a little bit. So again, I'm just going to going to pick it up to a little trot. I'm going to get my hands forward, but just because I shortened up, didn't mean that I tightened up here. Now again, it's a guiding position. And I'm gonna rock that leg back and push the canter. Now, again, I, I'm not opposed to grabbing that saddle horn if I need to help myself. I can grab it and make myself actually look pretty darn good. Sometimes I'll actually push on that horn, like push, push, push to find that rhythm. I'm keeping my elbows close to my side I might pick up on that left wing just a little bit. Bring that nose to the inside. It's a rhythm, bump, 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 bump. Not too much. I'm gonna bump him, bump him a little, turn him loose a little. If he was speeding up, I could pick up and release him. Pick up and release him and get that rhythm all the time. Here, just thinking while I ride. Pick my eyes up. Here, I'm gonna grab that candle and feel this horse. Here, put my hands across my chest, stick it out, oh, there went my rein, and I'll just stop him, one rein. You know, that's kind of good to see right there. There's no need in panicking, and if you've done your homework, this horse is gonna be able to stop with that one rein. Just pick up lightly, stay loose and cool, in control. Let me, hey, long as I'm right here, let me show you a cool way to pick that rein up. Watch this, I'm gonna throw that over here, I'm gonna pull it up to me like so, grab my rein, go underneath, and I'm back in business just like that. 
Craig Cameron Horsemanship Clinics at the Double Horn Ranch are designed to fit each rider's individual needs. Five different round pins, corrals, arenas, and the original Extreme Cowboy Race Course make great horses and riders. I learned more in three days than I have the, the first 35 years I rode a horse. It was like having a private lesson. Even though it was a group, it was like having a private lesson. Yeah, you'll wear out the Wrangler in your jeans, I tell you. <laughs> Advance your horsemanship and come ride like a champion with me at the Double Horn Ranch. You know, all these things, you know, I always say if you never, ever drop a rain, your, your hands aren't soft enough. So all the time, you're thinking while you ride. So, all right, Greg, that was kind of fun uh, stuff. Yeah, I'm proud of you there. <laughs> like, uh -oh. You know, and it's not really a problem because, you know, in horsemanship, those things are gonna that happen. happens all the time. You bet Why it does. Why do you think in roping they go to single reins? Because they got tired of dropping reins. <laughs> yeah. and these split reins are our training reins. Mm -hmm. You know, Greg, I tell you what, I appreciate you coming hey, down. Hey, thank you for you inviting me. You always make me laugh. I always have a lot of fun with yes, you. Yes, sir. And you know, your family's doing so great. Well, you and your you. wife, thank Rachel, you. doing a great job of keeping the cowboy tradition alive. We hope you guys will too. Hope you learned something this week. In the meantime, keep thinking, keep riding like a champion, and we'll see you next week on Ride Smart. The store is closed, people!